Okay, we're in section 92.3. We're going to do the exercises now. Um, I have the answers written out, certainly, to one, two, three, four, five terms as specified, but I don't have the work down. So these videos are really dedicated to the students that need to see the work being done for this. So I'm going to go to the whiteboard because I really can't fit it here. And I'll rewrite the problem, and the problem is as follows. It's going to be x. Whoops, I don't mean to do that. Let me go backwards, get my pen out. And let's start again. So it's going to be a plus x, and it's raised to the one-half power. Well, i got to get the proper form first by factoring out an a, and this would be 1 plus x, the whole thing raised to the half power, which would equal a to the one-half, and then that binomial, which is pretty easy to expand. And we're going to do that now. So it's a to the one-half times a binomial expansion. So 1, we're using a generalized binomial theorem, 1 half, whoops, I made a mistake here. I just noticed it. And I'm glad I noticed it before going forward because I would not have matched the answer in the key. Okay, next one is going to be 1 half and then 1 minus a half. I'm sorry, 1 half minus 1, which is minus 1 half, over 2 factorial, and then x over a squared. We'll simplify these terms and we'll distribute a to the one half across those terms. Let's keep going. Plus one half minus one half. And it's gonna be one half minus two, which is minus three halves. Over three factorial, which is six, x over a squared. And then one more term, one half. And I wanna point out this really nice pattern to this. It's going, the numerator is going down by two. So minus one, minus three, and then minus five. And that's gonna be what? Uh, four factorial, which is 24. And then it's gonna be x over a cubed. This goes on forever. And what I need to do is I need to do the work now. And then we'll look at the key later. So I'm gonna say root a. You know what, I'm not gonna say root a because I have to do some work with that. I'm going to say a to the one half. And I got to do term by term simplifications. So you get one plus x over two a. Wow, the next one's going to be tough, isn't it? Well, the sign wise is I know it's a negative number. And that looks like it's going to be, let's see, an eighth. And then you're going to get a squared in the bottom and you get x squared on top. Let's go to the next term and that's going to be positive. A little more complicated for me to do. I'm going to side, do a little side work over here. Um, I know it's positive, so I get 3, and then I get an 8 and a 6. 3 goes into 6 two times, so I get a 16th. X. You know what? I forgot to put the 3 there. Sorry about that. Just noticed it. It's good I look at these things, because otherwise, if I'm not looking, and this is going to be, let's see, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. This is 4. I'm glad I looked. All right? But again, I'm going to look at the answer key after I'm done. All right, so that's going to be x cubed over a cubed. How many terms you got? One, two, three, four. Let's go to the last one. And I'm going to do that arithmetic now. That is going to be a negative number. And what do you get over there? I'll write this down for you. You get 24 in the bottom. And then you get uh, 16. Uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. And on top, I know the sign already. It's 15. I'm going to divide by 3. This is 5. And this is 8. And you get 80 and 48, 128. And you get 5. And then you get x4. And you get a4. And this goes on forever. All right, I'm going to multiply it through now. And what do you get? You get a to the 1 half plus x2. Well, 1 minus a half is a half. That's a half. We'll look at the key later. Minus x squared, 8. And that's going to be 2 minus half, which is 3 halves. And then plus x cubed, 16. 3 minus a half is 2 and a half. And that would be a to the 5 halves. This has a nice pattern as well. Minus 5 x4. And it's going to be a plus, plus, plus. By the way, to write down plus, 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 uh, 
I'm not saying the sign of the next term is positive. All I'm saying is we're adding on a bunch of things after this. All right? What do you get on bottom? 128. And then 4 minus half is 3 and a half. And 3 and a half is 7 halves. Let me get my red pen out. And I want to see if I got it right. And the way I do that, I look at my K. And I see this term there. You know, I notice they're writing uh, some of these things with uh, radical notation and some without radical notation. It doesn't matter to me, though, but I'll go through that in a moment. So I see that. I see the minus x squared, 8a eight, eight to the 3 halves. I see the x cubed, 16a to the 5 halves. I see the minus 5x to the 4, and I see this over here. By the way, I realize they are using radical notation, and um, I'll write that down for you. So root x plus x, this would be 2 root x, I'm sorry, root a, I'm, I'm misspeaking by the way. Let me get my eraser out, it doesn't look right. That's root a, this would be root a. Now by the way, this is a violation of radical rules, you shouldn't have brought it to the bottom, but I'm not going to worry about it. What's the next one going to be? Well, if you want to write it with a radical, that would be 8a root a. Next one, plus x cubed, what do you get over there? 16a squared root a, minus 5x4, do not feel obligated to do this by the way, 128a cubed root a. And it's got a nice pattern writing it down that way. If you want to rationalize those things, which I'm not suggesting you do, that would be x root a, over 2a minus x squared root a, and that would be 8a squared plus x cubed root a, this would be 16a cubed minus 5, I forgot to put the x cubed, oh no, it's there, I'm sorry, x4, I thought I forgot somebody, root a, and that would be 128a to the fourth power, yada, yada, yada. Again, I kind of like this answer the best. It's an easy one to write down. It's also, for me, it's easy to predict on the next, uh, at least the, the letters of it. The, the numbers are more difficult to predict, by the way. But it does check out. Don't feel like you have a, an obligation to rewrite these in any particular form. Uh, but that might depend on your teacher. Some of your teachers may say, you know, put it in simplest radical form. In that case there, you got more work to do. This is simplest radical form over here, though. What's the problem with doing that? The more work you do, the more likely it is that you'll introduce an error to the problem. Thank you for listening.